Ford continues to roll right along under its new executive team. The automaker is out with better than expected second quarter earnings as people are still buying new cars during the pandemic. That is if they can find one that they actually want on dealer lots, which is a dynamic that has pushed up prices for cars over the past 12 months. Meanwhile, Ford says it's seeing strong sales and new models like the electric Mustang Mach-E and Bronco. Joining us now is Ford CFO John Lawler. John, good to speak with you here this morning. Uh, you certainly piqued my interest with uh, a new strategy at, at Ford, looking at keeping inventories lean on dealerships. Walk us through that. And does that mean you have also pulled back on incentives? Well, good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what we're finding with the uh, supply disruption that we have right now and the lower inventories, that there's a new model there for us that we think is better not only for us, it's better for the dealers and it's better for the consumer. And what we're looking at is keeping our inventories at a lower level, much lower than we've had in the past, and then encouraging customers to go online and configure and order those vehicles online and, and really allow them to get the vehicle, the exact vehicle they want. And we, as I said, we see that as positive for all of us in the business here, the dealers, the customer, and Ford. John, one stat that I, I came across this week, the average price of a new car is, is $41,000. Explain to us why the prices of cars are going up so much. What is causing that inflation? And as Ford, you know, is focusing a lot on, on SUVs and electric models, do you also have to develop a low end line so consumers could actually go out there and, and perhaps afford a car. Well, what we're seeing right now is we're seeing the disruption uh, in the supply chain. And so supply is very low. And, and that low supply, of course, you're seeing the imbalance in, in supply and demand and the pricing that comes with that. But more importantly for us at Ford, we are experiencing that as well. And the whole industry is experiencing that, the, the pricing opportunity there due to the supply shortage. But at Ford, we're also seeing incredible demand for our products. Uh, we have the best lineup that I think we've had in the 30 years in my career. Incredible demand for the new F-Series that we launched uh, last year at the end of the year. We have a fresh F-Series. We have launched the new Bronco Sport, the Mustang Mach-E, which is new. We were sold out on that. 70% of those customers are new to Ford. And so we see incredible demand for these products that our customers want. And so that's allowing us to have some, some pricing power there. And, you know, I think that uh, as we move forward, we're going to see that moderate over time. But right now, uh, we have strong demand for our products. Consumers like our products, and that's a positive for us. And you saw that come through in the quarter. Morning, John. It's Julie here. Are, are you seeing any kind of mix shift, though? Are, are you seeing any customers who are maybe trading down in the price spectrum? Because, you know, certainly a lot of people maybe are, are spending up for the products that you were just talking about, but there is still some price sensitivity out there, one would think. There is price sensitivity, but another tailwind to the industry right now are the strong residuals. So customers are coming in, they have, if they have a vehicle to trade, the vehicle's worth more, that's allowing them to trade up potentially to buy a vehicle at a higher series mix or actually to lower their payments. So there's a lot of tailwinds for the customers right now as well. You know, John, uh, it's Miles here. Something else you guys uh, talked about in the, in the release and, and this, this new model of encouraging customers to order certainly um, can alleviate some of those, those problems going forward. But right now, you mentioned they're expecting to lose 50% of planned second quarter production on a shortage of chips, something, or, you know, shortage of materials overall, chips obviously at the heart of that. How are you guys managing through that as you think about the second half of this year and, you know, getting those cars, we talk about strong demand, getting those cars uh, to consumers in the near term before we start, you know, thinking about the, the long-term model shift? Yeah, so we did. We lost 50% of our planned production in the quarter. And we were disproportionately impacted by one of our key suppliers who had a fire in their fabrication plant, the chip fabrication plant. And so they were down for the quarter. And we lost 70% uh, of our volume in the quarter due to that fire. They're back up and running, they're shipping parts to us. And so as we roll through the, the second quarter into the third quarter, we're starting to see improvement there. And it's in the second half, what we said is we should see a sequential improvement of about 30% in volume second half over first half. And then on top of all the orders we have uh, in our system for products, we believe we're spring loaded for a really good strong second half with the demand being high, the products coming back through, supply picking up, production picking up, and so we see a stronger second half in front of us. Ford has been very front and center, John, uh, with its push into electric vehicles, not only this year, next year, and then you know many years after this, after that. 
how profitable are these vehicles? For example, is the Mustang Mach-E, is that the same, at the same profit margin as a Ford Edge? And then the F-150 traditional truck, is that as profitable as the Ford Lightning? So when you look at the electric vehicles, it's early in the technology curve. And as you know, when you're adopting new technologies, the prices for those technologies tend to be higher and they'll come down over time. And you know, we've talked about that. We have a plan to lower the cost of the batteries and the other electric components. So the electric vehicles as they stand today, they're not as profitable as the internal combustion or the traditional gas powered or diesel powered vehicles. But I will say that our Mustang Mach-E today is profitable. Uh, it's not as profitable, but it is profitable. Hey, John, um, of course, Congress is talking infrastructure, as they have been forever, seemingly. But of course, one of the things they're talking about is a charging network. And it seems like the latest version of the legislation is going to have less money for a national charging network. How, how important is that for you guys? I mean, you guys are pushing electric cars. Your competitors are, too. Do you think that this needs to be a bigger part of an infrastructure package? Well, a charging network is key uh, for consumers because one of the biggest tension points they have in shifting to electric vehicles is where am I going to charge? Am I going to be stranded? Will I have the ability to keep my vehicle charged if I want to go on a trip? Are there going to be enough locations for me to charge? So we do see it as being critical to the development and growth in the uh, BEV for BEV volumes and in the EV world. So, yeah, we would focus on and we think that there should be more focus on building out the charging network. And we think that's an important part of what needs to happen across the country. So we'll continue to work with you know, our, our policy team and with the government and, and push to have charging be a bigger part of any package that would come through. John, I have 30 seconds left. Are the Broncos, are they out of stock? I see a lot of them. I am starting to see a lot of them by me, but if I wanted one, can I get one? Well, they're, they're tough to get. As I said, demand's really high for the Bronco Sport, which is in the market today. We're just launching the Bronco, uh, our, our full-size uh, Bronco. And so I think that, you know, supply short, demand is long, so it may be a bit of a wait. But, you know, we're doing everything we can to inc increase our production, get those vehicles to our consumers. And, you know, we're, we're intensely focused on doing that through the third quarter as we see the supply of chips improve and our production increase. High-class problem to have. We'll leave it there. Ford CFO John Lawler, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend.